Welcome back, everyone, to episode number 39 of the S and Reza podcast. My name is S and Reza, and I am a real estate agent in the greater Toronto area, helping you find a home, buy, sell, or invest. Now, in this episode, we're going to be talking about the first time home buyer's guide, where I'm going to be giving you a 10 step process on how to buy a home in Ontario. Before we get into it, if you can please like, subscribe, and share this podcast with anybody else you know that might be interested. That would be amazing. We're right now at 243 subscribers, and my goal is to get to 500 subscribers by the end of the year. So buying a home can be a very overwhelming experience for a lot of first time home buyers. And even if you have bought a home before, this can still be pretty overwhelming because there's a lot of things involved. So in this video, I'll be providing 10 steps on how to buy a home so that we can guide you in the best possible manner. The first step in the home buying process is the initial appointment with the real estate agent or myself or any other realtor that you may know. Now, in this initial appointment, the goal is for me as a realtor to get to know you, the home buyer, and to uncover and discover what you're looking for. So this is where we'll sit down, we'll talk about your needs and wants in a home, we'll talk about what your budget is, we're also going to be talking about your location, your purchasing parameters, you know, what is it that you're looking for as a home buyer that's going to make you happy for the long term. So that initial appointment is the very first step that allows me to discover what you're looking for in a home. The second step in the home buying process is acquiring a pre-approval from the bank or an independent mortgage broker. So after our initial appointment, I will connect you with my mortgage advisor or if you have a bank that you have a history with, you can also speak with the bank. And the idea here is to find out how much will the bank or lender give you as a mortgage. Now, when you're acquiring a pre-approval, the bank is gonna ask you for some key questions and documents. So they're gonna ask you for your income, your job letters, your credit scores. Do you have any other assets or liabilities? This will all help them discover how much they can actually lend you. Now, the reason why this step is so important before you even start reviewing homes is because this will save you a lot of time and now you'll actually understand and know exactly how much your budget is what your monthly payments are going to be and what you can afford. The biggest mistake that I find a lot of home buyers will make is that they'll think that they're approved or they have a budget in mind without going to the bank. And once they start shopping for homes, when they realize that, you know what, the bank won't approve me for this mortgage, they're already wasting so much time in the process. So it's always better to have that pre-approval set up in the very beginning of the home buying process. Once you know how much you can actually afford and how much the bank is gonna lend you, then you can go and start viewing properties that fit your range and your home budget. The third step in the home buying process is actually starting to look and viewing homes that you like. So this is where your realtor will send you properties that fit your criteria, fit your budget, and you'll select those properties that you want to see. Now, a lot of times when I go out for showings, some buyers may not like the home that they saw. They may see the pictures and they like the pictures, but viewing it in person, sometimes it's not the same as what they saw online. And a lot of people think that this might have been a waste of time, but actually it's not a waste of time because buying a home is not a process of selection. It's more of a process of elimination. What that means is that when you see a home that you don't like or a neighborhood that you don't like, even if you went to go see it, now you can eliminate that kind of home from your process and from your search and you're narrowing down your search even more, finding out exactly what you're looking for. And the more you do that, you'll narrow down the home search and the criteria and you'll eventually eliminate the homes that you don't like and pick the home that you do like. The fourth step in the home buying process is actually writing the agreement or the contract. Now, this is where you've selected a home, you like a home, you wanna put an offer in, and now you're gonna put an offer in a property. And in the agreement of purchase and sale, there's gonna be a few key elements that you have to consider. So number one is going to be the price, of course. Now, how do we know what price to put? This is where I would look at the comparables in the area, speak with the other listing agent, and kind of find out what their expectation is, and also get an idea as to what comparable homes have sold for in the last 30 to 60 days. That will help us come up with a price point. The second thing to consider is a deposit. Now, when you put an offer in, you also have to put a deposit if your offer is accepted on the next business day. A deposit is usually about four to five percent of the purchase price. So for example, if you're buying a home for a million dollars, you're gonna to wanna to put a deposit of around forty to fifty thousand dollars. That money will go to the real estate brokerage, the listing brokerage. 
the next day after your offer is accepted and that money goes towards your down payment so it's really important to make sure you have that cash saved up in an account somewhere where it's easily accessible in case your offer gets accepted you can now use that money to transfer over and use it as your deposit the third element in the offer or the contract is going to be the closing date this is when your possession is going to take place so even if the offer gets accepted let's say today you're not going to move in tomorrow you're going to get the keys probably two or three months down the road so this is something that you have to negotiate with the seller or your realtor will negotiate on your behalf and it depends you know for example if you have a house to sell on the other side and that will take two or three months you may want to have a two or three month closing as well on the buying side or if you're renting and you need to give your landlord a 60 day notice to vacate you'll need those 60 to 80 days 90 days to move into your next home now in the agreement we're also going to mention key elements or what's included with the house so for example if let's say the house has appliances or has a air conditioner we want to mention all these things in the agreement some key things to include will be the existing appliances so the fridge the stove the dishwasher the washer dryer a microwave a range hood could be a hot water tank if it's not a rental uh, it could also be the air conditioner uh, it could be the garage door opener so things like that you want to make sure you mention that in the agreement so that on the closing day there's no surprises and that everything that you've asked for is still going to be in the home when you get the keys. Some other key elements in the agreement are going to be the conditions and clauses that you want to put to protect yourself as a buyer. As your realtors, we are specialized and experienced in making sure that we protect you as a buyer. And so in the Schedule A, which is part of the agreement, we're going to put clauses in there. For example, we're going to put a financing condition, an inspection condition. These are conditions that will allow you to do a home inspection on the property. These are conditions that will allow you to get your mortgage in time so that you don't get sidetracked if, for example, you're not able to get the mortgage. Also in the agreement, we're going to put key clauses that would include, for example, the home was not used for any criminal activity. The home was not used for any drug operations or a grow up. Uh, we want to include the fact that all of the appliances are in good working condition. We also want to make sure that in the agreement, we're going to put a clause mentioning that the home is going to be empty. It's going to be vacant and it's going to be clean when the keys are handed over to you. Step number five in the home buying process. So after your offer is accepted, this is now where you're going to submit your deposit to the listing brokerage the next business day. So like I said in the previous step, you wanna make sure that you have some cash saved up in an account that's easily accessible that will allow you to get access to those funds right away. And so after your offer is accepted, we're gonna to go to the bank, we're gonna give that deposit draft to the listing brokerage. That draft will go towards your down payment. Step number six in the home buying process is going to be the home inspection. Now, home inspection is a very key component in purchasing a property here in Ontario because a home inspection allows you to figure out if there are any red flags or major issues in the property. So when we do home inspection, we try to do it in the first five business days after your offer is accepted because that's how long the condition actually lasts. This is where we'll get a certified home inspector into the property and they will look at some major elements of the home. So for example, they'll look at the roof, they'll look at the windows, the air conditioner, uh, they'll take a look at the furnace, they'll take a look at some of the appliances, they'll take a look at leakages, you know, are there any issues that they can uncover? They'll even take a look at the attic to make sure that the insulation is okay, were there any leakages, were there any raccoons in there? These are all things that the inspector will look at and give you an idea as to how the condition of the home is. Now, what I always tell my clients and home buyers is that in any home inspection, you're always gonna find about eight to 10 issues, minor issues that will come up. Minor issues can be taken care of, but it's those major issues that we wanna look out for. For example, was there any structural damage in the home? Was there a flood? Was there a significant leakage uh, in the basement? You know, And if there are any major issues that you're concerned with, then because of the condition, you can actually back out of the agreement in those first five business days and get your full deposit back. So home inspection is a very key component in the home buying process. It's highly, highly recommended to put that clause in the agreement because it protects you as the buyer. Step number seven in the home buying process is satisfying those conditions that you put in the original agreement of purchase and sale. So if you remember in one of the previous steps, when we were writing up the contract or the agreement, we had put 
a couple of conditions in there, which was the home inspection condition and the financing condition. So these conditions are there for five business days. In those five business days, for whatever reason, if you want to back out of the agreement, for example, if let's say your mortgage broker or your bank could not get you the mortgage in those first five business days, or if the home inspection came out and you were not satisfied with it, then you can actually back out of the agreement and get your deposit back in full. Now, in the other situation, if let's say your bank came back to you and said, hey, look, you're good to go with the mortgage. You will get the mortgage on closing. And the home inspector says, look, the home is in good condition. Then you can now waive those conditions and you can tell the home seller that, look, we are satisfied with our conditions. We're gonna be waiving or removing our financing and inspection condition. Now, once you remove these conditions, you have to understand that the deal is now firm and binding. Your deposit is now locked in. So at this point now, if you back out of the agreement, then there could be issues because you may lose your deposit and you may be liable for damages by the seller. So it's very important to know and understand that before you waive these conditions, you're fully comfortable moving forward because if you're not, you can still back out. But if you are, then you can proceed and you can move on with the sale. Step number eight in the home buying process is connecting with a real estate lawyer. So after the deal is firm and binding, we're going to contact a real estate lawyer who's going to be doing a few key elements to make sure that you're also protected in the home buying process. This is where they're going to make sure that they facilitate the transfer of your funds on closing day or a couple of days prior to closing to make sure that the money is moving through proper channels. They'll also take a look at any liens on the seller's property to make sure that when you do get the keys in uh, possession that the property is free and clear. Now, we connect with the lawyer immediately after the sale is firm and binding. Um, I can connect you with the lawyer that I have, or if you have a lawyer that you know personally, you can do that as well. And a lawyer will typically charge you about $1,500 to $2,000, but they will take care of you on the day of closing. Now, it's important to make sure that you have an experienced lawyer on your side, someone who's going to communicate with you, someone who's going to be in touch with you, someone who's going to really hold your hand throughout the process. And as an added value service on the realtor side or as my side, I also help to ensure and facilitate that the communication between myself, the home buyers and the lawyers are all in parallel so that we're all on the same page. The ninth step in the home buying process is visiting the home prior to closing. Now, in the agreement of purchase and sale, a very standard clause is that the home buyer is allowed to visit the property two or three times in between when the offer was accepted until the cl actual closing of the property. These are called home buyer visits. The purpose of these visits are for you to maybe show your family and friends the home, take some measurements for furniture purposes, what I always recommend is that if you have two or three visits, you want to make sure that you save one visit for at least a day before closing or a couple of days before closing. Now, why is that so important? Well, the reason for that is because we want to make sure that we do a home visit right before closing to ensure that the property is empty, the property is vacant, the property has been cleaned as we outlined in our original agreement of purchase and sale. We also want to make sure that in between when you sign the agreement and the closing date, which could be 60 or 90 days, we want to make sure that there were no major damages in those days, that there were no leakages, there were no significant issues, that the house is in fact clean when the keys are handed over to you. In any event, let's say we do find something major, this is where our lawyer will come involved and we'll contact the lawyer immediately and let him know, look, property is still not vacant, it's very messy, or that we discovered, for example, a major defect in the, in the wall or there's something going on. This is where we get our lawyers involved. This is why we hire the lawyers so that they can get down to the bottom of it and make sure that when you get the keys, that you will get a house that will be clean, empty, vacant, and in the same condition that you saw it when you first bought it. The last and final step, which is a 10 step in the home buying process, is the most fun step in this process, and that is going to be collecting your keys on possession date. The keys and the garage entry and the garage fobs will be available to you on the closing day any time between 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and this is when the funds will be transferred to the seller, 
you'll get access to the home and now you can start preparing to move into the property. Sometimes you wanna move in maybe a couple of days later just to kind of settle in, but this is the most exciting day for home buyers. And as your realtor, you know, we are proud to be at your side in, uh, throughout this entire process because it is a very overwhelming experience sometimes. It's an exciting experience, but also very overwhelming. And as a realtor, you know, I always say that our job is to make sure you get the best deal possible, but really a bigger job is to help facilitate you throughout this entire process and to help reduce your stress level to make sure that you're happy at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, even though this is a overwhelming experience, it's also a fun experience. And we want to make sure that you enjoy the home buying process because without that, then it does lose its meaning. So. I hope you found these 10 steps helpful. If you have any more questions on how the home buying process works, you can always reach out to me and I'll be happy to provide you with more information and more value. See you next episode, guys. Thank you very much.